Hey, it's Press Lovers. Mark here from Whole Latte Love. Today we've got some entry level grinders. We're going to take a look at some grinders that you could pair with a machine like the Gaja Classic Evo Pro. It's a premium grade entry level machine. Some of you just picked one up. Maybe you've been using it with a pressurized basket because you can start with this machine without a grinder. Now you're ready to get into some better espresso and grind for yourself. So we've got four grinders here, all that can be used with a Gaja Classic Evo Pro or a similar premium grade entry level machine. So what I'll do is I'm going to take you inside, show you uh, what's inside each grinder, how they operate. So we'll be grinding on each of these and then we're going to figure out, you know, which one, depending on how you might use it, might be best for your situation. So I have four grinders here, the Fellow Opus, the Barazza Encore ESP, the Eureka Mignon Facile, and the Barazza Sete 270. So what we're going to do is take a look at uh, you know, things like the noise they make, how they're used, their grind quality. We'll take a look at the different burr types in these grinders. And again, we're going to take you inside each one and grind with each one. First up, the Fellows Opus. We'll go top to bottom through this. This is set up as a single dosing grinder. We'll talk about that as we go through. Some uh, can be used that way. This one is specifically set up that way. So what you do is you load your beans in the top here and grind just what you need. The grind size adjustment is right here. So you just slide this around. This is a type of grinder that could be used for all purposes. Now one thing to know about this is it's probably not the grinder you want to do um, if it's, if it's going to be all espresso. And the reason for that, the espresso range, there is a little cheat sheet in here, try and show you that. The espresso range is from one to two. Now there's individual hacks in between that one and two there. So you don't have a lot of espresso range. And if you're new to espresso, one thing you should know is espresso grind size is critical. It's the most important and often most misunderstood. But what this grinder does, it does have a little trick up its sleeve. So you can turn this off, take this off, and then you can access in here and you can get to what's called micro adjustments. So in between the little settings here, you've got a little more range. The issue here is it's not incredibly easy to use. It's not going to be, it's kind of hard to adjust this. Um, but you can get it adjusted and turn this. I'm going to try my best here. There it goes a little bit. So you get some micro adjustments in here if you're not quite right uh, to grind size for espresso. Now for other brew methods, that's not a big deal because the grind size for say, pour over a press, although you know you want to get it right, it's not nearly as critical as it is for espresso. Now one thing I will point out in this grinder, it's very easy to get in here and clean it out. Um, it's a grind straight through. We'll see that the, uh, the other Baratza grinder here is the same sort of setup. So it's a grind straight through. Um, that burr there, this is a conical burr. Uh, it's in that 40 millimeter size. Now generally conical burrs are fine for brew grinding. Uh, people into espresso generally prefer a flat burr, and we've got one uh, that we'll take a look at in a minute, but you can get by with a conical burr for espresso, no problem. Um, so very easy to get inside of here, not incredibly easy to do those micro adjustments. So we'll get this back on, and then I'll take you through the rest of the grinder here. It does have what's called a blow-up device of sorts, so when you're grinding, since it's a single dose, you're just going to load this with the amount of beans that you want, to use, so if it's espresso, you know, maybe 16 or 18 grams, then you're gonna turn the grinder on, let it do its grinding, it does come up with this cup. So this is a dosing cup for a portafilter. So if you take a portafilter here, you set this whole thing, and as my photographer likes to point out, it does have a magnet in there. So it kind of goes into the right spot automatically by itself, but you grind right into that dosing cup, put your portafilter on top, flip it over, and then go into here, okay? Now this does have some timing functions on it. They're, they're pretty basic. It's press the button here. It's uh, once for 30, twice for 60, three times gets you uh, two minutes, 90 seconds, <laughs> and, uh, then you get up to two minutes. So you just press and it starts grinding. You can hear it, no beans in there right now, so it's relatively quiet. Um, now, if you don't need that whole 30 seconds, just press again and it stops. So uh, let me get some beans and we'll grind some beans with this and show you how that works. All right, so I grabbed 18 grams of beans in this little dosing cup here. I'm gonna pour those in. 
put the top on and I'm set to like an espresso size. We'll get an idea of the sound here and how long it takes to grind all those beans up. It's a little louder there when it's actually grinding some beans. And I can tell by the sound when it's done. And in my testing, it was somewhere, it's about, grinds about 0.7 grams per second. So to grind this 18 gram dose, it's gonna take about 25. ish, depending on your grind size, if it's fine or it takes longer. And I, I guess didn't get quite through there in the 30. Oh, there it was. So now as it's grinding, I can, this will help blow out any of the residual coffee in there and I can stop it. And let's take a look at how we did. So there's the grind. And what I'm gonna do is just show you how you'd load this in a porta filter. So you'd put your porta filter on top, Give it a little tap, and there you go. There's our 18 grams. Now, since it ground into this cup, um, you can see, you know, it's, it's, it does a nice grind here. It's not like real clumpy. Of course, I'm coming out of the cup here, so that helps break some up when I put them in there. Now, if you're grinding for other brew methods, again, you just take this right off. You put this underneath, and you could grind into that in the higher grind size ranges. Um, what else can I tell you about this? Um, you know, that, that's probably the slowest grinder of the bunch here. Okay, all right, let's move on to the next grinder. This is a Baratza Encore ESP. Um, this is also a conical burr grinder. Um, if you look up top here, what you have is 40 grind settings. Now, if you notice right over here, there's 20 settings that are within the espresso range. Um, there's no internal adjustment for this. All that is right there. And what happens with this grinder is when you're in that espresso range, it gets to a much finer change in between each setting. Um, so it's a little, it's going to be a little easier to dial this one in for espresso and you've got more to work with. But let's take a look from top to bottom here. We've got the hopper up top. We have a pulse switch right here. And then we have just a simple on off switch on the side. So a little different than the, than the fellows we looked at. Um, doesn't have any preset times or anything like that. You'll notice it has a grinds bin up here. This is for grinding if you're gonna do press or pour over or drip. Um, you'd be up in the you know, range up in this area and you'd grind right into the bin here and then load from there. If you're gonna do espresso, what it has is it's got this little uh, holder here that slides in. No magnets on this one. Uh, and then he'd put the dosing cup in here and you'd grind right into that. We'll do that in a second. But let's take this out. I just want to take you inside of this one like we did in the other one. So to get the hopper off, it's just twist it all the way counterclockwise, put it out. Then inside, I'm going to put my glasses on here so I can see what I'm doing. Um, it's got a little rubber piece here. And then we can lift the burr right out of here and get in there. It's, there it comes. Um, you do want to make sure you put this back in correctly. There's a little red mark on here and a corresponding red mark in here to show you where it goes. Now, you can't pull the top. The, well, you did see the top burr came out real easily in this. Um, getting in here to clean it out is going to be a little bit more difficult. You can get the bottom burr out, undo this, um, and then it'll pull out. You do have to be a little careful. There's a little washer under here. So cleaning this out, not super easy, but can be done. This grinder does not grind straight through. It's got a path that's gonna go, kind of take it like this a little bit. So what you're gonna have is some retention in this grinder. Um, if it was totally cleaned out and you put a fresh dose of coffee in there, say 18 grams and ground it out, you get somewhere around 16 grams out. So it's not gonna be as fresh as the Fellows Opus. But let me put this back together. So I'm gonna make sure that red line marks, lines up with the red line in here. Make sure I get my little rubber gasket back in there. And then the lid also has a mark on it, a little white mark right here that corresponds to the little arrow right there. And we twist it back on and we'll get it. I'm going to set it just kind of like in the middle of the espresso range. But I do want you to hear this grinder, what it sounds like for espresso and how long it takes in comparison to Fellows Opus we took a look at. So another 18 gram dose, put that in. We'll use the side switch here to grind away. You get an idea of the sound. This one might be just a little bit louder than the uh, fellows grinder.
and it is taking some time now. If we actually had a bunch of beans in the hopper here, it would probably help press them down. You wouldn't see as much of the popping up top here where it's popcorning a bit. The grinding time is, you know, fairly similar probably to the Opus for that. A couple more. Again, this is not a single dosing grinder. Okay, we'll turn that off and then we'll see what we got. So there's our, there's our grind. I'm going to take a look at that. You know, if you're grinding for espresso, one way to kind of get started as to the grind size is to kind of pinch it between your fingers. And if it holds together and you can almost see your fingerprints in there, you're pretty close probably. Now, I've got a great video on how to dial in grind size. I'll link that uh, in the card and down in the description. But again, this would be loading uh, your portafilter up just like this. So you pop your portafilter on top, turn it over, give it some taps, get it in there. And again, you can see you know, not a lot of clumps in there. That's, that's really nice. Um, you still, you know, like as you get more into espresso, you might stir these up a little bit uh, before you tamp them, that kind of thing. Um, so all in all, you know, not real loud. It has more espresso range. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, when we get through this, you know, what, depending on your brewing situation and how you might use the grinder beyond espresso, which one might be best for you. This is the Eureka Mignon Facili grinder. Uh, this is the first and only flat burr grinder. You got 50 millimeter flat burrs in here. Again, flat burrs are uh, preferred really for espresso. Um, and this is an espresso specialist. It's also the only what I call machine grade grinder of the bunch. Um, this is significantly more expensive than the first two we looked at. Um, it's also the only true stepless grinder of the adjustment, meaning the grind size adjustment here is continuously variable. So very easy to make tiny, tiny little changes in espresso grind size. And again, as you get into espresso, you're going to find out grind size is very, very important. But what I'm going to do is we're going to speed it up a little bit. I want to open this up so you can get a look inside this grinder. And I'll just tell you right before we do the speed up here, it's only four screws. Very easy. Here we go. And we just have three in here. All right, so all the screws are out of there. We'll take the top burr off and show you how different a flat burr looks than those conical burrs. I'll uh, we'll put those side by side. One nice thing about this uh, setup that Eureka uses is when you take this out, there's no loss of grind size. So if you had your espresso dialed in and for some reason you really wanted to clean out the grinder and not lose your grind size, you can do that on Eureka grinders. Um, as you can see in here, we do grind. So here's the path that the coffee goes out. So again, this is not a single dosing grinder. Um, again, it's going to be similar to the, uh, the Encore that we looked at in that there's going to be some coffee if you left after grinding. So if you grind 18 grams in this you're probably going to get again in that 16 gram uh, area of coffee out. Let me put this back together and we'll get this running. All right, all back together again, just those four screws. Really easy to get in there. Don't lose your grind size. Um, like that a lot and easy to clean out. And as you saw inside of there, that's all metal. So metal case, metal components internally. Um, that's going to be different than the other grinders. It's got a lot of plastic even inside. But uh, let me take you through here how this works. So a simple on off switch here. And then the only way to start this grinder is this little activated switch there. You can see some of the grind left over there from last time I ground coffee through this. So you just use your portafilter to activate the grinding. Okay, I'm going to have got 18 grams again here. Again, this is not a single dosing grinder. You, you could try, but you're going to get a couple grams from the last time you ground coffee in it. And typically you'd have this hopper full of some beans which would help push them through a little bit faster than what we're going to get here. This one does grind a little faster with those bigger burrs, as you'll see. So it's just press it in there and hold. And it does have a little shut off on the hopper here, so I'm going to do that to prevent popcorning as we're doing single dosing, which again this grinder is not really set up for. And that's a Pretty good dose of coffee there. As you can see, it was a lot faster than the other two grinders. Um, not terribly faster, but a little faster. And you see the grind distributed nicely. We got a little that, that you know, came over the edge. Not unusual, uh, but it's, it's pretty nice and fluffy. Um, got no problem with that. Again, this is a machine grade grinder. 
Those flat birds are going to be preferred. This is an espresso specialist. We will talk about you know, which grinder might be best for you, depending on your situation. All right, last up, we've got the Barazza Sete 270. There is the 270 WI model, uh, which actually weighs coffee. This one is a timed grinder. So if you look up here, we have three grinding presets. So you can change the time here. It's real easy to change the time as well. I'm going to come around and I'll just show you how that's done. So if you want to change the time on a preset, you just use the up and down arrows here. And I'll go from 4.15 to 4.2 seconds. Just press and hold the preset that I want it on. Now I've got 4.2 seconds there. When I want to grind, it's very simple. Just press the play button. You see just a little bit of leftover coffee in there. This one's a little bit louder, isn't it? Um, it also comes with a grinding bin here, so if you wanted to grind for brew methods other than espresso, you push those forks out, set your bin in, and you can grind into that. Um, for the portafilter grinding, again, push those in, and you can adjust the little hook here, so you can have your portafilter wherever you want it. We'll grind into this in just a second. Very nice. Now, the grind adjustment on this, what you have is a macro ring, and a micro ring. So there's 31 macro settings here. So for espresso, we're usually down, I don't know, maybe in the you know, five to nine range, maybe even a little smaller. Then if you need to adjust the grind size, again, that grind size is real critical. Here's a micro adjustment. So within each setting here, you, can, you have all this adjustment. So you can really tune in on your grind size. Let's take a look inside here. Take this off so we can empty that out. The hopper comes off very easily, just turn, pulls off. And then this is a grind, straight through grinder, so it's a clear path from top to bottom here. Um, so very little retention in this. This is going to be under a gram almost always, maybe half a gram. So you technically could single dose with this, and that's what I am going to do with this grinder. Um, again, this is a appliance grade grinder. It does have some wear parts in it. In fact, it'll come with a couple of shims and after grinding a few kilograms of coffee, you pull the burrs out, they come out real, real easy. Put a couple shims in and it restores after break-in its fine grinding uh, capabilities. It, you'll grind finder. Then in between these two rings, there is a little felt piece of felt in there, costs about a dollar. After a lot of use, that felt will kind of wear out, and you'll notice this may slip a little bit. That's when it's time to replace that dollar piece of felt. Very, very easy to do. Um, I've done that a couple times. So we got the hopper up here. Hopper's nice, does have a shut off for it. Nice metal one, I like that. We'll put that on. But let's grind some coffee here so you can hear what this grinder sounds like. Again, I've got my 18 gram dose here, so we'll put that in. Put our portafilter on, and I'm not sure really how much time I need. I've got 4.2 seconds, so let me grind for you here. And if I find the play button, there it is. Now we're set a little fine. I can tell that's a little fine just by looking at it. So I'm just going to adjust that a little bit coarser here, and we'll hit play again. That's more like it. but really, really fast, right? And I'm not perfectly dialed in here at all, but you can see how nicely it distributed into the portafilter. It's nice and fluffy. Um, really, no clumping at all. It's very fluffy grind compared to most of the grinders I use. And this is a conical burr, and again, those flat burrs are usually preferred for higher end espresso, but the conicals will get you by. Um, one thing to know that this has what's called their all-purpose burr in it, for, I don't know, 25, 30 bucks. There's also their S burr, I think it's the S2, that can go in here, pops in and out really easily, and that'll be better for brew grinding. So if you're doing a lot of brew grinding, that's what you want. If you're doing a lot of espresso grinding, you want the all-purpose burr that comes right with it. So, things to know here, um, again, this is about the same price as the Eureka Mignon Fat Chili. It's an appliance grade, but it grinds really fast, really fluffy, and does time grinding. And one thing, another thing to know, I didn't really show it here, but it's very accurate. When you have beans in the hopper and you grind by time, you can get the same dose weight, grind cycle after grind cycle, usually within a gram. Um, every once in a while, you get some chaos in there or something, something happens and it's a little different, but usually very, very accurate. 
So if you want to use the same dose every time, the Sete can get you there. So those are our four grinders, Fellow Opus, Barata Encore ESP, Eureka Mignon, Fetchile, and the Barata Sete 270. But which one is going to suit your situation best? Well, you know, there's a big price difference here. These two, about the same, about $200. These two are about the same price, about $400. Um, of course, you're looking at a machine grade grinder with a flat burr in here. Now, if I wanted the best espresso grinder here, this is my choice. I know plenty of people use the Sete and love it. Um, this one is probably just going to last a lot longer. There's no wear parts in there. There's some thought that, you know, the flat burrs are going to be better. But my overall pick for best espresso grinder is, is right here. And I, but I've used the Sete plenty of times, and it does just fine. Um, if you want, you know, a really quick grinder, you're not worried about the sound, and maybe you're going to do some other brew methods. Um, you could go with the Sete. It's going to grind really quick for you. Might want to consider if you're going to be doing a lot of, you know, pour over, drip, or press. Uh, you might want to consider their special S2 burr here as well. It's only like 25, 30 bucks. So the fellow Opus here, you know, if you're going to be doing, I'd say espresso only occasionally, this could get you by. And if you're doing higher end coffees for drips and pour over, the single dosing in this, you know, the, the grind size isn't super critical for those brew methods. Um, you know, you do want to control it, uh, but you're going to get a super fresh dose. It's set up as a single dose, or you weigh your beans in there. You get pretty much exactly the same thing out with that blow-up device every time. If you're going to be maybe doing a little more espresso and you want to save some money, yet you're also going to be doing other brew methods as well. The ESP here, the Encore ESP, is a really good value choice. You know, the Encore, its original one, has been out for at least a decade, and it was Barazza who kind of brought home espresso grinding to the masses. Uh, before Barazza, there really weren't a lot of options other than complete commercial grinders. And the price is nice on this, and it'll get you by. Is it, um, is it a grinder you want to use with a higher-end espresso machine, so if you're going to upgrade someday? Yeah, probably not. Um, again, we talked about this one, my pick for espresso, the Eureka Mignon Fat Chili. The Sete 270 over here, again, really quick, you, you know, if noise is going to be a problem, this isn't the grinder for you. It does very accurate timed grinding. So if you put in, you know, four seconds and your grind size isn't changing, you're going to get about the same grind, grind, amount of ground coffee out every time. And as you get into espresso more, you know, controlling your dosing weight, is very, very important. So this can do it for you. Um, I'll just one more thing on the Fatchilli here. You know, Eureka makes more expensive grinders that use pretty much the same form and factor. They put, you know, timed grinding into that. Um, some of them, they get up into, you know, 55 and, and larger burrs and some of their other grinders, so they might grind a little faster. But if you want a good quality espresso grind and all you're doing is espresso and you want a grinder that's gonna last a really long time, uh, you can't go wrong with a Fachilli. Now, if you have any questions on these grinders or anything coffee, use those comments. Oh, and do check out my video on dialing in grind size. Critical when you're making espresso. So if you're new to espresso, you are going to want to watch that and learn how to dial in your grind size. I'm Mark from Olatte Love. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here soon for more of the best on everything coffee.